Hey everybody, I'm Owen. This is going to be a presentation about the country of Brunei. So Brunei is this very small country in uh, southeastern Asia. It's that little green speck of land there. It is an incredibly small country. It is only about the size of two counties in Kansas, to give you an idea of how small it is. Uh, Brunei has a very long history. The earliest mentions of uh, the land there come from China. And in the early history of it, there are a number of different nations and countries that ruled in the area. Some were colonized by India and China. But in the 15th century, the current nation of Puni that was there uh, converted to Islam and created the Sultanate of Brunei. Um, the Sultan, the uh, Sultanate grew in power, eventually becoming an empire, a, a strong regional power in the area. If you see the map up in the top right corner, it is showing the uh, time lapse of the land that Brunei had over time. And you see that in the 15th, between the 15th and 17th centuries, Brunei actually controlled a much larger mass of land than it does now. Um, starting in the uh, 1500s, uh, Spain declared war on the Sultanate of Brunei because Spain had begun to colonize the area and they also wanted to eradicate Islam across the world. And so uh, Brunei actually won the war. They drove Spain from their lands, but Brunei was severely weakened by it. Uh, this led to a large number of internal strifes and conflict that eventually sent the empire into decline. In the 1880s, Brunei, uh, who had lost most of its former power and was severely weakened, uh, appealed to Great Britain to become a British protectorate. This means that they could control their own internal government, but Great Britain would basically control all of their foreign affairs. Um, this continued up until World War II when Brunei was occupied by Japan. Japan imposed the uh, Japanese imperialistic laws and such on Brunei, their own currency, their own system of governments. Um, during World War II, Brunei uh, experienced a number of famines, uh, disease. There's a lot of problems that came from the effects of the war on the area. Um, after Japan was defeated in World War II, um, Brunei was liberated and began the process of rebuilding. They were still a British protectorate. Um, and they remained one up until 1984 when they gained their official independence from Great Britain and over time has turned themselves into a very developed and mostly first world country, even for as small a size it is and in the area. The government of Brunei. In theory, Brunei is a unitary constitutional monarchy. The country does have a constitution and it does support the monarch, the sultan. In reality, though, it is a unitary Islamic absolute monarchy where the sultan has complete power over the government and Islam has the influence in what the government does. The sultan is a Islamic concept and rules with Islamic ideals and views. There are several elements of the government that do make it appear like a democracy. It does have a, um, a legislative body, but people aren't elected to that. They are appointed by the sultan, and they really don't have much power anyway. Brunei's history with human rights. Brunei, for the most part, has a pretty decent history involving human rights. Um, that is up until recently when the sultan uh, put in place a system of laws based off Sharia law, which is Islamic law. And this system of law includes things like stoning people to death for homosexuality. This caused a lot of uh, outcry from other countries around the world, the United States, the United Nations. Um, but the law still stands, and it doesn't look like it's going to change much at this current time. History of the press in Brunei. Brunei actually has a very free pre press. Technically speaking, the government could take complete control over the press, but they don't. They've allowed the press to be very free. There is a state-owned press group, but it is fairly uh, independent and non-biased. And for the most part, the country is pretty modern in how they have their press operating. Biography of the current leader. The current sultan of Brunei is that long name that's not even his entire name actually his official name is like four times that length but i'm not even going to try to pronounce it so we're just going to call him the sultan 
He was born July 5th, 1946, as the eldest son to the previous sultan, which is why he is now the sultan. Uh, he actually went to school in Kuala Lumpur and then attended the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst in the UK for secondary school. Uh, he then became Sultan on October 5th, 1967, and has been the Sultan ever since. Uh, his reign has been largely marked by a success. Brunei has become a very successful country. It is incredibly wealthy for the small amount that, it, for the small size that it has. Uh, the Sultan himself has an estimated worth of 20 billion US dollars, which makes him one of the wealthiest people alive today. Brunei's relationship with the U.S. The only official documents of relation between the U.S. and Brunei is a Treaty of Peace, Friendship, Commerce, and Navigation that was put in place into 1850 and technically remains in place today. Um, the relationship has been well, but that is really the only time that there's ever been any actual like, treaty or anything like that signed between both of the countries. Uh, in 2013, the Sultan of Brunei visited the U.S. and President Obama, and uh, Brunei has a U.S. embassy in its capital, and the U.S. has a Bruneian embassy in Washington, D.C. The election process of Brunei. Brunei has no election process. It is a monarchy. And that's all for today.